Welcome to the British American Business Council discussion on the future of travel. My name is Darlene Hollywood and I'm the principal of Hollywood Agency and I'm a proud member of the BACNI. In case you're wondering, Hollywood Agency is an integrated marketing firm dedicated to making brands famous. Today I'm joined by a wonderful, wonderful panel including Gabriella Salas-Cook who is in charge of sales strategies and marketing initiatives for Virgin Atlantic's East Regions commercial team based here in Boston. Simon Hawkins is responsible for the joint venture performance and integration of Virgin Atlantic and Delta Airlines and its partners from the U.S. to the U.K. And Mimi Cleary is a VP Supplier Relations and Strategic Sourcing for Atlas Travel and Technology. Well, it's been obviously well reported and felt by business and pleasure travelers worldwide. The travel industry has been especially devastated by the current pandemic. But the news is actually not all that bleak. I actually read earlier this week in the Wall Street Journal that um, passengers are actually up. So last Thursday saw 318,000 and then 348,000 passengers pass through U.S. security checkpoints. And that was the first time that that's happened since March 23rd when that number actually topped 300,000. And that's according to TSA. And the day is gonna come when we're all gonna go back to traveling. I personally can't wait. So our panelists today are really going to help paint a picture of what that's going to look like. So I'm going to start with you, Gabby. Um, I'm interested to know what is Virgin doing to weather this storm? Well, first and foremost, thank you so much for including us in this amazing series of podcasts that you're putting together. Um, you know, it's very important for us as an organization to belong to organizations like yours where we can reach out to all of you with this type of information because there's no other way of communicating now but virtually and um, you know at Virgin we take the communication one-to-one -one and with our employees and as well with our customers very seriously so this question is great I get it all the time lately <laughs> and uh, Virgin is managing things accordingly in a fast environment because things are changing constantly you can see how um you know one day you have in the news that you're not allowed to travel the next day is like you may be allowed to travel and especially to the uk it's been somewhat of a challenge because the information is um confusing at times and for everybody it's not just for that particular country but i think along the way for everyone else um, we are taking a lot of measures in safety and health, um, not only on the planes, but also with our employees. I mean, we're just um, having in the office working uh, crews that are extremely um, crucial for the business. So there is no way of um, impacting their health while working at the office. And also with the airport and the um, pilots and the, the crew teams, they are very aware of um, the importance of keeping those planes clean. I mean, I tell my, my friends and family, like if you want to travel, now's the time to travel. Like, time to travel. The airplanes have been cleaner ever, <laughs> you know? Um, but I think Simon can just attest to a lot of the um, quality enforcements that we're placing on the airplanes and the, and the cleanliness that we are, you know, inquiring now and, and requesting from our teams. I can add a bit more context into the, the cleanliness focus. I think uh, in my dual role at both Virgin and Delta, I can talk to both sides, um, both airlines, who obviously we work hand in hand, and I'm probably a good representation of that, having a team on both the Virgin and the Delta side. Yeah. So I guess the um, where I would say, where I'd say working in the airline industry now, I think we've all become cleanliness experts, um, mm -hmm. more so than ever before. So I think the two main focuses for airlines and airports, in fact, is around trust and confidence um, and real transparency for the customer. So what we have built, and this is on the Delta side, um, particularly over the last two months, is an end-to-end -end customer experience. So um, if anyone uh, watching this has had the um, ability to actually travel over the last two months for essential travel, they would have seen quite a significant change in the airport customer experience. Um, firstly, first and foremost, um, all customers must wear masks. Extra are supplied um, by Delta domestically to support um, customers who turn up to the airport without masks. But, but by and large, I think it's become a normal way of life now. So that is one of the key differences that we are seeing. 
Um, we obviously have the cleanliness focus at check-in kiosks are wiped down. Um, there is also plexiglass applied um, to mm. the check-in kiosk for those people who are going to the kiosk. You know, we continue to encourage people to check in from home um, and to do bag drop and to minimize uh, contact where they can. But we obviously realize that many customers aren't able to do that. Um, hand sanitizers are provided everywhere throughout the customer journey as well. Um, and this obviously includes, we partnered with the TSA as well in terms of the industry, not just from a Delta or a Virgin Atlantic perspective. Um, so customers are metered um, as they approach the TSA, TSA counter. For those customers who actually have the paper boarding passes, um, they do not hand them over. They will be the ones that scan those um, on their own. And obviously all TSA agents have masks um, and have gloves on consistently throughout the whole process. So end to end, it's, um, it's a pretty consistent process that is being provided across US airports um, from a Delta perspective. Mm -hmm. I would say as well, from a boarding perspective, Gabby spoke to some of this, so I can speak to the Delta side in a bit more detail. And when I talk about Delta, Virgin and Delta do work consistently together. So when Virgin does relaunch its passenger services, you can expect um, something very similar. Um, at the moment, uh, Delta is capping um, the, the passenger load factor to 50% in first class and 60% in the coach cabin. So that's obviously to minimize the contact that you would have with um, customers that aren't within your family or within your group. So in many cases, what you'll see is the middle seat will be blocked out for booking. And that is sacrosanct. That is not a situation where you'll get on board and you'll see a stranger sitting next to you. It just doesn't happen. Um, which I think provides a bit more reassurance to customers because we do re realize that confidence is a key consideration during this time. In addition to that, I said at the start that we've all become, um, in the airline industry, we're all becoming kind of health, hygiene, and cleanliness experts. Mm -hmm. um, we've learned a lot about the filtration systems on board our flights as well. So we have all aircraft are fitted with what, we, what are known as HEPA filters. So what these do is obviously it's an air filtration system, but it eliminates in testing 99.999% of viruses in testing. So it is very clean mm. air that's being circulated across the aircraft. In addition to that, the actual uh, cleaning of the aircraft, there is a deep clean of the aircraft that takes place on every turn, whether on international or domestic. Um, and obviously we also have our flight attendants who are looking over the process and inspecting. Um, they do have the authority to turn around and say, this isn't clean enough for our customers to come on board. Boarding as well, um, at the moment, boarding is taking place from the back to the front. So again, this is to minimize contact with the customers um, as they approach the aircraft. So quite a few changes that are taking place um, through the customer journey. Again, this is we want to be transparent um, and we want customers to feel confident in the, air, in the um, airline industry as a whole as they return to flying. Well, hearing that, I personally feel a lot more reassured. But um, while we're on you, Simon, can you also just tell me, are you seeing any difference in domestic versus international travel, or do these procedures carry through regardless of the destination? Um, so in terms of the cleanliness procedures, they are consistent across the board. Um, mm -hmm. With regards to current levels of demand, um, I think you opened it up beautifully by saying there has been um, well, we'd say green shoots, some green shoots of recovery that we are seeing in the passenger demand. I would say it is very, very different between domestic and international. So mm. um, with my Delta hat on, because Virgin obviously doesn't have a domestic network, Virgin Atlantic. Um, I think actually, sorry, with my Virgin hat on for the international piece, we're obviously heavily governed by um, government regulation. Um, mm -hmm. So I think many of you will be aware that uh, in the case of the UK last week, the British government imposed a new 14-day quarantine, which is a self-imposed quarantine for anyone arriving into the UK. Um, they are required to provide their address and um, they will randomly be checked on if they are at that address. If not, they will be um, dealt a heavy fine. Um, mm. And that's obviously going into place on June the 8th. So with that, there is obviously a significant delay to flying, um, to international flying to the UK. And when you think about it, it's obviously overlapping as well because the, um, the US government also has restrictions on anyone coming into the United States. So sure. um, we're very much at the beck and call of governments, governments that we are working hand in hand with for any international travel. Um, we do have operations currently, but actually what's, gone, what's taken place recently, and there was a very good article in the New York Times at the weekend, that a lot of international airlines in particular have almost converted their operations into cargo only. 
So actually the seats have been blocked off and there are now things like PPE equipment, which is being transported mm. around the world to support the various um, health institutions trying to um, support the people of the world. So there's a, quite a significant change in international travel at the moment. Um, domestic, as you've said, has seen quite an improvement, um, particularly over the last two weeks. Um, what I would say is we are still operating at, a, at just over about 80% of capacity of seats domestically in the United States. But there has been an exponential increase in bookings that we've seen over the last two weeks. Um, the types of customers we're seeing is obviously um, something that we are really focused on. Um, obviously, from a corporate perspective, we are starting to see some corporate travelers fly, but it is quite limited at the moment. Um, there's obviously a duty of care with corporates um, that we are working very closely with corporates on. It links into the cleanliness piece. Um, but I think corporates for the time being are slowly starting to reintroduce um, flying into their employees, but it is going to be a very, very long game. We are very, very confident on that. Where we are seeing a gro its growth is in um, domestic leisure flying, um, where we are seeing quite a significant increase. You know, it's really important to say that as an industry, and the, um, the main body has said this, IATA, they have said that we are expecting um, pre-COVID levels to return around two and a half years to three years later um, after COVID-19. Um, so, it's a slow one. Right. Um, Mimi, that's a great segue to you. What are what are you seeing from an agency perspective? What, who is going to be traveling the most in the next in the foreseeable future? Is it going to be corporate or is it going to be pleasure? Question: um, We've been polling our corporate clients because we've seen family and friends traveling, but we hadn't corporate had really completely stopped. But I mean, it's a great question. Um, we've been polling our corporate clients because we've seen family and friends traveling, but we hadn't corporate had really completely stopped. But um, after a few weeks, like starting early April, we started to see the humanitarian sector starting to travel again. But the challenge with the humanitarian sector is that um, the borders are closed in so many foreign countries and they really mm -hmm. are trying to get internationally. So what we've seen currently is people related to COVID like testing. We do have several clients that are actually dealing with testing and equipment for COVID. So that's been interesting. Um, and that's really the only sectors traveling. But for corporate, what we're hearing from our major corporates is, is that the first step is going to be reopening their mm -hmm. offices. And with Massachusetts being still in quarantine, and we are a global agency, we have a location in the UK as well. But the vast majority of our larger corporations are here locally, and they haven't even reopened. So that's step one. And then step two was once they reopen, um, start to think about new policies. The larger corporates are very concerned about liability. Abby, what incentives, if any, are is Virgin putting in place to encourage more patronage? Um, well, I think first and foremost, the, uh, the fact that we're caring about your safety and your health, um, that's the main incentive that we can provide. It's actually making sure that you get from point A to point B in a safe um, the safety way in, in an environment that you feel comfortable. But um, as far as promotions and in, in price, you know, development, I think it is all redundant to the to the situation is it's just you cannot travel so much so right now uh we're seeing the increment and in, and in rates just you know um uh they'll, they're um vulnerable and they go up and down you know like a, a like the market requests so we can ensure right. that we're going to have your back we can ensure that we have everything in place in order for you to enjoy and take a trip and probably are more affordable than before because of the demand because it's so um uh, low however um you know we also have a very uh, strict policies in place not just with the airport planes and our internal systems but the airports and everything all the costs that go around you know flying an airplane um, so it's just something to keep in mind but you know at the end of the day what you want to do is just ensure that you're gonna have a quality of product when you go into your travel experience and that you're gonna receive exactly what you're expecting if, if not more yep so Mimi both Gabby and Simon talked a lot about how those respective airlines are really promoting a safer travel experience from an agency standpoint what are you what are you doing to try to better protect your clients 
Um, Darlene, we've noticed that clients want to know from the minute they walk out the door to the time they return home that it's safe. So it's not just about the airlines. So the airlines are doing a great job. So what we've had to do is kind of cover all bases from ride chair to hotel to um, car services to the airline. So what we did, we started off, we thought that, um, actually, I think we're a pr little premature because we thought travel would pick up at the end of May, maybe early June, which it has, but not to the degree that we thought. So we started in the first week of May and we said every two weeks, we're going to do a theme to our campaign of we're ready when you are. So the first campaign we did was a communique, which we call our Communique is our agency platform that we use to get out to all our um, clients. Mm -hmm. So what the first one we sent out was just what the airlines are doing in their soft dollar programs to encourage corporates to say, okay, so your points, are, you're not going to lose your points. You're more flexible. Mm -hmm. Then the second one we did was the frequent flyer campaign because we know that everyone who is a business traveler, the number one thing that they're concerned about is their points and what's yep. it mean to them. And then the third campaign we did um, was the clean campaign. So we took all the airline videos, which we worked really hard to work with our partner airlines and get all their videos. So we did a little blurb on all that they're doing and included their link. And the airlines have done a fantastic job with covering their clean campaign. Mm -hmm. But on that same campaign, we included what hotels are doing, ride chairs are doing, and car, mm -hmm. um, rented cars are doing. And then just today, we released um, the finally traveler tips. We're ready when you are. And we listed everything from the TSA links to what they can expect. Simon addressed it in the beginning, like what you can experience at the airport. But it's bigger than just the carriers. It's, you know, the when you get to the airport, your club may not be open. So check your destination, mm -hmm. your club, or your mm -hmm. club may not be servicing a full meal plan. So don't go hungry. Um, or even getting in a restaurant at an airport can be a different experience. It's going to be yeah. limited numbers. It's going to be, you know, no buffets. So everything has changed. The ride chairs have changed. They've gone from, um, you, they're even asking you to keep the window down if weather permitted. You have to have a mask. The driver has to have a mask. Mm -hmm. You can't sit in the front seat. So, so much has changed. And I really think mm -hmm. um, people that haven't been on the road, and if they're not keeping up with all of these changes, they're going to be shocked. So we thought by giving them traveler tips from the minute they walk out the door to the minute they get home, they would um, be grateful and it would help them. Absolutely. So Simon, how long term, is there going to be an impact on change and cancellation fees? So I guess um, the word unprecedented is used a lot during this period. And I <laughs> yeah. think we've probably gone through some pretty unprecedented changes with the way we've applied change fees. Hoping Mimi mm -hmm. was pretty comfortable with what we've done. But, um, you know, I think we've spent a lot of time listening to customers and as an airline, and we realized that there needed to be a much greater level of flexibility during this period. Um, so just an example, um, and I, you know, this applies to Delta and partners, but obviously also the industry. I think um, we're currently waiving change fees for travel impacted by coronavirus, but that goes through um, for all travel departing internationally and domestically from March to September. Um, so it goes, sorry, it goes through to September 2022 right now. So the level of flexibility is um kind of unprecedented is what i would say and in addition to that much much as what mimi actually said we we've also taken that kind of a similar level of flexibility with the loyalty status of customers you know mm -hmm. corporate customers as mimi said cannot travel so um we've taken the opportunity just to extend their status um and that will be extended to, through to january 31st 2022 as well so the existing status um right. so i think there has been some fundamental changes and you know, the word unprecedented, as I used at the start, this sets the, the framework for, you know, we hope we don't see, we really hope we don't see other pandemics like this. But if there were to be any further situations like this, then, you know, we do have a precedent for this moving forward. And uh, I think we've been pretty flexible in how we've moved with this and worked with our customers. If I may add just to your point, um, Simon, I think that also Virgin and Delta have been very diligent with their customer service um, uh, provided to the to the corporate world and the leisure world uh, one of the main reasons that people do business with us is that is that we take care of your problems and you we try to solve the the situation right away um, and we've been even though we have teams that are not working from home we actually took action ahead of the curve and 
and try to solve all the potential issues that we saw for coming. And um, that says a lot. When you're traveling, it doesn't matter if it's a hotel, a car um, share ride, or, or the airplane, right? It, you have to have that security and self-confidence that you're not going to be hanging and just left out alone in this unknown world. Um, and that's what Virgin and Delta have been doing very, very well, and not just in this particular time, but from before we've been awarded, you know, customer service um, 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 processes. But in this situation, I think that's one of the key things that you have to look as a traveler. Who are you going to travel with? Who are you partnering with? Just make sure that you have that telephone number or that email that is going to rescue you if something were to happen. And, you know, to your point, Mimi, it's great that you have those tips of, on, on what to expect because everything is so unknown. Yeah. Mimi, pivoting a little bit, when do you expect corporate meetings and conferences to resume? Oh, good question. So we have one conference that didn't cancel for 2020. It's um, wow. late summer. I know. Well, you know, it's only May, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. But everything that started to, we just started to get rebookings from rollovers from this year mm -hmm. for um, most of them are in spring of 2021. So we have had encouraging news, but it is 2021 for the, the bulk majority of meetings thus far. Okay. And going back to you, Gabby, Simon talked a little bit about what the experience was going to be like at the airport when people showed up, but can you tell us about travel requirements in terms of documentation or what you're going to need? Well, it, it is very um, vague right now because it all depends where you're going and the process that that country is experiencing. Uh, but so far, I think, um, you know, as, as far as domestic travel, everything is in place as normal. You have your passport or your ID. Um, but what matters mostly is that if you feel any sign of a cold or, you know, your temperature is not, you know, normal meaning that it's going a little higher that's going to be a red flag not just for for the airport um or for the the place where you're traveling but also for yourself I, I, it's going to make you vulnerable to anything that may have may happen around you so i would just be very wary and, and just check that you're feeling 100 percent before you travel just to be considerate also for the other passengers and the other people traveling along with you um, i think that's one of the main situations that we see when the curves start to spike up again is because we are not taking care of ourselves and we're only responsible of you know our families so i i really urge everybody that is traveling to really take into consideration that you live in a world with everybody else what the society needs us to be very careful on how we are you know doing things nowadays um, but before just putting that into place and making sure that people are being safe in staying at home or when traveling or using your masks. Um, you know, at the airport, I can tell you that we've had meetings with them and they're very aware of the situations um, when it comes to, for example, picking up your luggage, you know, like use, people used to hang out and then just get in a cluster right around um, to check for the bags and to see if they were there. Well, there's now rules in place and there's like the six feet um, underlining um, spaces to determine where your bags are gonna be. One of the wonderful things about Virgin and Delta is that you have your app and then you're gonna be notified where your bag is and when it's ready. So you don't have to worry and you don't have to go and, and be near anyone before you pick your bag because you know where it is. Um, so, at, at the same time, like Mimi was saying, you know, like if your club is open, we're going to be very careful on where you're going to be sitting and who's around you and just making sure that those spaces are taking, um, taking in place. Um, other than that, I, I think it's all related to what your needs are in traveling. Um, there are some countries that need some specific passports, but they're not official just yet. And I think mm -hmm. Mimi will know more about that than, than we would do. But for, for what I understand and my personal experience in the UK and the US. Um, so far it's just your passport, your, your visa if you need it. Um, and that depending on the country that it's opening their borders. 
Yeah, just to contribute, um, so there's another new acronym. Um, Simon had mentioned the first new acronym in COVID, which was uh, the PPE, the personal equipment, <laughs> personal protective equipment. The other one they've just started to hear about is there's two terms for it, travel bubbles or green zones. And what that hmm. means is, is countries are um, coming up with their own deals to let them travel between countries. So, you know, like Germany and Austria have a, mm -hmm. a green zone agreement. Um, so Europe has a lot of green zones starting to open and other countries have, we're calling them travel bubbles. But what we're doing is um, we're having live links attached to all of the itineraries on the countries that people are traveling because it honestly is changing every single day. Like Simon mm -hmm. mentioned earlier, I'm sure. they finally came out officially with their quarantine um, starting June 6th. So can you imagine if you, if you were, you know, turned around and said, or you got to London and they said, you know what, you can't leave your hotel. And mm -hmm. I do think countries are being very restrictive and they are finding ways to monitor it. So you have to say where you're staying and they are actually checking. Um, like mm -hmm. we, everybody heard the story in Singapore where one of the pilots got put in jail mm -hmm. because he was at the CVS yeah. instead of being at his hotel and he was supposed to be quarantined. So they mean business. So, you know, as travel management companies, we cannot say, they, oh, just go, you'll be fine. They really need to have a plan in place when they're ready to travel international. But I think international is a little bit farther away than domestically, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And now if you, if you remember like back in the day, they were saying like, oh, travel agencies are non-existent anymore. You're not going to need travel yeah. agents because you can't just go online and book it. Uh, this is a time that you'll want to be with a travel agent and mm -hmm. not because of the experience with COVID and but if something happens, they also have resources that, you know, an online site and not, not to be against any on online sites but because we even offer our flights, but I'm just giving a heads up when it comes to your, your preference. You know, if you can partner with somebody that has the knowledge, that has those links, that has that experience, it's going to be a better experience for you for now rather than just trying to figure it out all yourself because you don't know that we don't know. Yeah, I'm sure like Virgin and Delta Atlas sent, we rescued so many people when the borders started to close, mm. you know, reaching out to charter companies, our local partners to do charters. Um, people really realize that you do need a travel management company when, when you're a corporation. It's such a liability to have your travelers out there with no backup plan or no duty of mm -hmm. care in place. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Simon, is this event going to change the role of the flight attendant? Um, I would say in a word, it would probably slightly evolve it, but the role of a flight mm -hmm. attendant has always primarily been around safety and security. So mm -hmm. um, we see the cleanliness piece is uh, what they're probably, what, they're, what they are already doing um, and a slight evolution of what they're doing. So um, just to add to the, the cleanliness discussion, for example, we find that if we have consistent policies in place, um, I think one of the concerns we had was, um, you know, would a flight attendant have to police people wearing face masks on board flights? Mm. Um, and we didn't want to put um, flight attendants in that position. So I think with clear policies in place and a general understanding from the traveling public, I think we're not in that position thus far, which is good to see. Um, what, the, what the flight attendants are also really valuable for, as we, we've always known, is um, there are eyes and ears on the aircraft or additional eyes and ears on the aircraft. So they have the jurisdiction that if they deem an aircraft not to be in the state of cleanliness that we expect it to be in on turnaround, they can delay the flight as well. So they're an added pair of ears and eyes there. So I don't actually see them actually changing significantly. It's all about safety and security of our people and our customers. Great. Mimi, what is the fate of the cruise industry? <laughs> uh, that's a mixed review. So today, <laughs> um, in speaking to our leisure department, um, most of the people that booked for 2020 have actually secured their cruise for 2021. But they are saying they're not getting new business, they're only getting rollover business. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting. But the cruise um, has done everything that the airlines and the rental cars companies have done. They have, you know, pretty much thinking of taking out the buffet. Um, it'll all be served by the staff. So their staff is going to have to increase. So that's a big financial, you know, consideration that they'll have to take. I think you'll see trends like people no longer wanting to be in the bottom of the ship. They're going to want to be, have an outside yeah. cabin. They're going to want to have a balcony. So if they do get stuck, at least they have fresh air. 
um, they'll practice social distancing, they're changing their restaurant um, policies in regards to the number of seatings. They're actually reconsidering having group tables. Today you have, you have a table you know, of 10, you may only have your family at the table. The cruise ships haven't really come mm -hmm. up with final plans. They're still really trying to evaluate all of the policies before they come out and state it officially. But I think they'll be fine. I think 2021 is okay. And then they need to start re, really campaigning like the airlines have to start getting back that business for new business. Right. Gabby, how is the industry going to be changed forever? Or is it? I think it has already. <laughs> Every single industry has changed. I mean, if you think about just working from home, there were so many offices that, or, or uh, companies that would not even allow that, and now they have no option but to work from home. Mm -hmm. um, I so I, I believe that eventually we're gonna get to a place of comfort. Uh, everybody is eager to just have that little piece of life back into your everyday schedule. And, and we were just talking about it, you know, like even going to a hairdresser is just so essential mm -hmm. that you did not know how important it was to you until you really see, you know, what happens after a month or two. Um, but it's the same for, for the travel industry. It's just, you know, adapting. I think that for anything that you do in life, especially for us that we are in a, in a fast paced environment, um, these type of changes are opportunity because these are creating new disruptive um, environments that are gonna force us to change within the um, fast paced environment we live in. You know, um, to just mention one of the examples is, just going from that cleanliness side when people were complaining about how they were traveling and now you go to a place where it's just your safest zone um that's a, a disruptive in the industry that we were not foresee and that we were not expecting to take on you know and, and it, it's just making things better it's, it's making the environment better in a whole new world um and i believe that also as a team you know working internally we're also now having peace of mind on how we're doing this in a humanitarian way not so much on the uh, money making revenue machine that we have it's also being very concerned about what our clients go through as the human side and also within the employee um, spectrum is like how do we feel about our teammates how can we collaborate and how can we make things better for them um, so they can just provide as much of their knowledge and their talents when working. Um, so those are the main things that I see evolving, but I see it evolve in every single aspect in life. I think even with our families, just that quality of time that you spend at home, that now companies are acknowledging that we need, that makes people happier, that, you know, maybe that travel could possibly, you know, wait a little bit and then just have that virtual meeting. Uh, however, we're very global. Um, social media makes the, the world available to you. And that also urges for you to go and see and visit other places that can make you happy and experience other languages and cultures and, and whatnot. Yeah. It's interesting because 9-11 um, created TSA. And I think the pandemic has created cleanliness mm -hmm. and safety. Um, mm -hmm. Touchless is going to be a key theme, but it's definitely mm -hmm. an evolution and it's definitely changed for good. Simon, the last question to you, what is the advantage of an organization like Virgin or Delta having a, a membership or a, a presence with something like the BABC? I think, um, as Gabby opened up, it does give us um, incredible insight um, and it gives us the ability to really communicate and partner and network with a lot of our valued corporate um, customers from the US point of sale. Obviously for Virgin, which is predominantly um, obviously a UK based long haul airline, it gives us the ability to really network with these customers, a very core set of customers. And it's also an enjoyable experience as well. Great. Well, I want to thank you all for participating today. This is, um, it's just a subject that I think is going to be with us all for 
some time to come. Um, as I mentioned before, I for one cannot wait to be able to go somewhere. Uh, <laughs> but I also want to just say to everybody watching or listening that you can stay connected with the Back Me on social. Um, we are going to roll out more of these podcasts throughout the summer and in the coming months.